Good morning, and welcome to Christ Temple Cathedral St. Louis Virtual Worship Service. Our pastor is Bishop Lindsey Jones. Our mission is to be passionate about loving God, following Christ, and impacting the world. Our service will include one song selection, the preach word by Bishop Jones, and closing remarks with song. Thank you. Enjoy the service.
Good morning and to God bless you. This day is the day that the Lord has made and you and I can rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to this moment in the Word of God and I would like to invite you to the New Testament book of Acts uh, chapter 1 reading verses 12 and 14 through Acts chapter 2 verse 1 through 4 and verse 47. The Word of God coming from the New Testament book of Acts chapter 1 beginning at verse 12 says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Chapter 2, verse 1 and following says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And verse 2 says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues or other known languages and the Spirit gave them utterance. And then verse 47 says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. This morning, I'd like to speak to you from the subject and share part one, when the church really prays. When the church really prays. And possibly you recall the story of that church worship service where right in the middle of the service, the organ suddenly stopped working. Well, there just happened to be an electrician in the audience, and so while the service went on, the electrician began immediately working on the problem. Well, within a relatively short period of time, he sent the following note to the pulpit. And this is what the note said. The note said, after the prayer, the power will be on. After the prayer, the power will be on. And what no doubt he meant was that by the time they get to that part in the order of service where the prayer is normally scheduled, the organ will be working again. But I want you to know this morning from the authority of the Word of God that after the prayer, or after we embrace what I will be calling real prayer over the next few weeks is still God's power for manifesting His presence among His people as well as unleashing His power on your behalf and on my behalf. 
And as we begin to look at what it looks like when the church really prays, when the church really prays, there will be the manifest presence of God that will be perceived. Would you look again in verse 12 and verse 14? It says again, then they returned to Jerusalem from Mount Olivet, which is near Jerusalem. And verse 14 says, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. And here in our text, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was an outright execution on Calvary's cross, not for his sins, but for my sins and for your sins, had left the church or left his followers not only in a state of confusion, but also in a state of, con uh, of chaos. And what I want you to know is that rather than allowing the horrible events of the crucifixion and rather than allowing the fact that their world had been turned upside down, I want you to see is that it drove them to God rather than driving them away from God. The unfolding uh, events of the resurrection it had a way of not only driving them to God, but chapter 1, verse 12 and 14 lets us know that it literally drove them to their knees before God in prayer. And when they began to engage in what I want to suggest and what Daniel Henderson calls worship-based prayer in his tremendous book entitled Transforming Prayer, How Everything Changes. When we see God's face, I want you to see what happened uh, when they began to seek God's face. Because in chapter 2, Verse 2 again, look what it says. It says, and suddenly there came from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And uh, it says, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one set up on each of them. Uh, you see that the uh, mighty rushing wind and the tongues of fire was, I want to say, was a manifestation of the presence of God himself. You see what was taking place here, it is God manifesting himself and letting the people know that he is present and not only is he present but that he is in their chaotic situation that was confusing to them but he was still on the throne he was still in control and what happened is that they experienced the holy spirit of God in a more intimate and powerful way than they had ever known. But possibly you may be saying, isn't God always present when two or three are gathered in his name? Well, that may be true. God is present. But just because God is present, 
it doesn't necessarily mean we perceive his presence. A uh, matter of fact, may I remind you that there is, yes, there is, there is a difference in what we call the omnipresence of God versus the manifest presence of God. You see, when we talk about the uh, difference in the omnipresence of God versus the manifest presence of God, the omnipresence of God has to do with the fact is that God is everywhere all the time and there is no place that you can go and I can go where God is not. You know, we often say that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Well, uh, I want you to know that the omnipresence the presence of God says that God is there all the time and all the time God is there. Matter of fact, it was the psalmist in Psalm 139 verse 7 who said, where can I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend up in heaven, Lord, uh, you are there. If I make my bed uh, in the lower parts of Hades, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me. And so when we talk about the omnipresence of God, we are talking about that God is everywhere. When I think about God being everywhere, one day there was a so-called theologian and he was sharing a seat with a small boy uh, on a bus and the boy was holding a Sunday school book. And so the man said to the little boy, said, son, do you go to Sunday school? The boy replied and said, yes, sir. At which point the uh, uh, theologian and professor said, uh, you know, he kind of thought that he would have a little fun with the boy. And he said, uh, tell me where God is and I'll give you an apple. The little boy responded and said, uh, Sir, if you tell me where God isn't, I'll give you a whole barrel of apples. You see, needless to say, that professor got a lesson when it comes to the omnipresence of God. But when we talk about the manifest presence of God, we are referring to that there are times when God will begin to manifest himself when we go on our knees in prayer and begin to seek the face of God and not just the hand of God, there is something about those times when God will manifest his presence and disclose his presence in a very a clear way. Uh, matter of fact, if you will, uh, again, uh, go back to the uh, verse in uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 12, again, it says, they were not only praying, but what they were doing, if you would see, they were praying on one accord. And it means that, you know, didn't have this one praying for their pet project and this one having for their praying for their pet issue, but rather they was all praying for the same purpose. See, so often uh, when we get together in prayer meetings and we uh, may be uh, wanting God to do this for us and do that for us, and it has more to do with us rather than what it has to do with God, but rather they were here gathered together in in unity with one heart in unity with one soul and one focus and they were seeking the face of God and not just the hand of God and I declare when it comes to when the church really prays I want you to know, and when you really pray, God will manifest his presence. God will show up 
in a very special way when God sees someone praying who is seeking his face and not just seeking his hand. Oh, uh, uh, you, most of you know, you may know that, of course, uh, my hometown football team is the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, they've gotten off to a very difficult start uh, this year, but I agree with one news writer who said it's usually the wedding day that's unforgettable. But there's a Kansas City couple who will be talking about their save the date photo session for years. Uh, you see, uh, there was a bride and her fiance who were obviously not only huge Kansas City Chiefs fans, but they were Travis Kelsey tight end pro fans as well in particular. And so both of them showed up for their outdoor save the date wedding photo shoot wearing matching Travis Kelsey jersey. And it turns out that their choice of attire that day really paid off for the couple. Because can you believe that as the photographer was taking the save the date pictures in Travis Kelsey attire, guess who just happened to show up and was randomly driving by. Yes, you guessed it. No other than Travis Kelsey himself. And when Travis Kelsey noticed the couple, guess what he did? He parked his car in the middle of the street. I guess he can get away with that. He hopped out introduced himself and joined the picture just to make his that soon to be bride's day one that she would never forget. You see, Kelsey noticed the couple and while I want to suggest he had driven by a whole lot of other people that day, but he didn't stop. He just passed them by but oh when he saw someone who was more into who he is rather than into who they are he got out of his car and said uh, i'm down for that and what this has to do with seeking the face of god in prayer we Kelsey realized when somebody was not just wanting a jersey or something else for from him, but rather they was already there publicly bringing glory and honor to him. I want you to know, come to think of uh, uh, passing me by, you know that song, pass me not, oh gentle savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, is it possible that God at times is passing us by when we pray and not manifesting himself because too often our times of prayer are more about our prayer list, about what we want and about what we can get from God rather than what we can give to God. But when you and I begin to passionately seek the face of God, God, will stop by, God will come by, and God will begin to manifest himself in his presence in a very real way. And so first of all, uh, when the church not just prays, but when the church really prays, and uh, when you not only pray, but when you really pray, uh, God will manifest his presence 
and his manifest presence will be received. But not only uh, will the manifest presence of God be perceived, but second, the mighty power of God is received. The mighty power of God is received. Let's go back to verse 2. Because there again in verse 2, verse 2 says, uh, There came a sound from heaven as a mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then verse 4 says, Is that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit of God filled every believer gathered in that room that day. It says they were all filled. It wasn't just the minister. It wasn't just the apostles. But every member of the church was filled with God. And as a result of their praying and being filled with the Spirit, if you look closer, there is really no indication that they were praying to be filled, but the Holy Spirit himself and personally filled them with God himself, but the feeling of the presence of God himself, I want you to see was the direct consequence of seeking God's presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, and not just God's presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E See, too often when you are praying and uh, when I'm praying, rather than seeking his manifest presence, all we want is what we can get from God. But I want you to realize that not only did the crucifixion uh, leave them in a state of chaos and not only in a state of confusion, but I'd like to suggest that it also left those early disciples and followers of Christ in a state of emptiness in a state of unfulfilledness, in a state of not experienced satisfaction in their souls. And I remind us that yes, in the presence of a holy God, our greatest need is indeed salvation. As the songwriter said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But where is our greatest need in this life and in the next life is salvation did you know that our deepest need is satisfaction? You see, God created you. God created me with a built-in and deep thirst in our lives that only He can satisfy. Oh, you may be aware, you may be, uh, have, you know, uh, one of these uh, robotic uh, vacuums that are able to go vacuum the 
floor itself. Well, there is a, another vacuum that is built within us from uh, creation that is that has a void that can only be filled by God himself. And one of the worst mistakes we can make is trying to quench the thirst or find satisfaction in our life, whether it's before salvation or rather than after salvation, separate and distinct from an ever deepening intimacy with God himself. And this includes uh, trying to quench that thirst uh, with that which only makes our thirst worse rather than make it better. A matter of fact, uh, there is a movie entitled Lifeboat. And uh, there were some shipwrecked people that are left drifting aimlessly on the ocean in a lifeboat during World War II. And as the days pass under the scorching sun, their rations of food and fresh water give out, and the men grow deliriously thirsty. Well, one night while uh, the others were asleep, one man ignores all previous warnings and he ended up gulping down some salt water for a few days and he quickly dies. You see, when it comes to ocean water, ocean water contains seven times more salt than the human body can uh, safely ingest. And drinking him, a person actually dehydrates himself or herself because the kidneys demand extra water to flush out the overload of salt. And you see, the more salt water someone drinks, the thirstier they get and can actually die of thirst. And what this has to do with experiencing a, the fullness of the Spirit when we try to satisfy God-given desires in ways all with that which is not God ordained. Do you know we become like that man that is we thirst desperately for something that looks like what we want, not realizing it is precisely the very opposite of what we need. And that's why our founder, Bishop Charles Price Jones, wrote, Precious Savior, I adore thee, all oh, your fullness now in part. Keep thy love wings, hold it on me, dwell yourself within my heart. Precious Savior, precious Savior, all oh, my treasure, Lord, thou art. Friends, God knows we need treasure in our life. God knows we need spiritual treasure. God knows we need physical treasure and healing. And yes, God knows we need financial treasure and financial blessings. But I want to remind you what Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 declares. The word of God declares that seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness 
and all these other things will be added unto us. It's something about when we begin to seek the face of God first. God has a way of meeting our deepest needs, meeting our physical needs, meeting our financial needs. But will we seek him first in his face and then to trust him with the blessings of his hand? And so when it comes to when the church really prays, uh, the manifest uh, presence of God is perceived. The mighty power of God is received. And then a third, when the church really prays, uh, look at this, the masterful purpose of God is achieved. The masterful purpose of God is achieved. Uh, look at uh, verse 4 again. Verse 4, the first part says, And they began to speak with other tongues, or again, I want to hasten to say, or other known languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And look at verse 47. Verse 47 says, And they were praising God and having favor with all people and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Oh, it says here that they began boldly speaking the word of God, not in an unknown tongue that only God can understand, but what was going on in this passage is that rather they were speaking known languages that foreigners in the audience could understood. But guess what? Those foreign languages were previously unknown by those speaking to them. The first lady, uh, Santa and I, we just uh, came back from Birmingham, Alabama, where uh, they're the uh, gathering of the Board of Bishops and Bishop Wives and uh, National Executive Board. Well, uh, the gentleman who was picking us up from the airport, he had only lived in the United States for about a year or two, and uh, he had lived a good portion of his life in Europe had lived, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Yugoslavia. And what was interesting, he told us he speaks five known languages. Well, uh, when these uh, followers of Christ were filled with the Holy Spirit, it led not only to boldness, but it led to the miracle of them speaking the word of God in languages that previously they didn't know, but those foreigners in the audience heard and understood the word in their own known language. Oh Lord have mercy. The feeling with the Holy Spirit led to a boldness to speak the word of God and share Christ and proclaim the gospel to those who are lost. And one more time, look at verse 47 again. It says that the Lord himself, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved and friend the ultimate purpose of God for your life the ultimate purpose of God for my life second only to worship is sharing Christ and being a witness for him to those who are lost. Real prayer, says Daniel Henderson, is not just the activity of telling God what is on our mind. But if you and I are going to embrace what real prayer is, real prayer 
is the intentional discovery of what is on God's mind. Real prayer is not about me getting my will accomplished in heaven, but real prayer is about heaven getting its will accomplished on earth. Real prayer, uh, you know, I know there's the song, and it's rather popular, or was at a time, call, call him up and tell him what you want. And, uh, you know, real prayer I want to proclaim is not me calling God up, telling God what I want, but did you know when I really pray, it is not me rattling off my prayer list like a menu and telling God what I want, but rather when there is real prayer, I am not so much talking to God, but rather God is talking to me and his Holy Spirit is speaking and I'm hearing the will of God and God telling me what he wants uh, and the feeling f-i-l-l-i-n-g and the fulfilling of the holy spirit within me yes it may satisfy my deepest need but ultimately i become more submissive and submitting to the will of god matter of fact think about it think about it think about it the so-called model prayer or what we call the lord's prayer it begins our father who art in heaven holy is your name hallowed be thy name and listen god or jesus said your kingdom come your will be done then we get to give me this day my daily bread but too often when we're praying we are talking about we start with the lord give me this day my daily bread but god wants us to begin to first worship him praise him adore him and then submit ourselves to him to usher in his will in our life and then we're able to say lord give me this day my daily bread oh what prayer is at its best prayer is as the song says lord i'll say yes lord yes to your will and to your way i'll say yes lord yes i will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me and uh, with a my whole heart i will say yes lord yes and so when the church really prays and when you and i really pray first of all the presence of god will be perceived the power of god will be received and then the purpose of god yes will be achieved let us pray father as we learn to really pray and it has nothing to do with the length of our prayer but rather it has to do with seeking your face and not just your hand we pray you might help us to draw nearer to you. Oh God, help us to not only seek your face and your manifest presence, but oh, may your power be poured out in such a way that you fill us with yourself. And then Lord, may your purpose be accomplished in our lives as we seek you in prayer. We love you, we bless you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. You may be listening to the word of God today and you have never submitted your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the day that you hear his voice, would you harden not your heart? And if you already know Jesus is your savior, would you uh, allow this season in your life to be a time where you allow his will 
through seeking his face and not just his hand and allowing his spirit to fill you and allowing his purposes to be filled in your life. God bless you. The Lord say the same. We'll see you next week as we continue to discover when the church really prays. God's blessings upon you is my prayer. This is Deacon Alonzo Richardson, and we would like to say thank you for joining our virtual worship service. Please visit us at www.ctcstlouis.org for the latest information. If you have prayer requests, if you would like to give your life to the Lord, or even join our ministries, please email us at ChristTempleSTL at gmail.com. October is Pastor's Appreciation Month, and we want to take the time out to say thank you to our pastor, Bishop Lindsey Jones. Please also follow our social media pages and also subscribe to this YouTube page and click the notification bell to the right and click all so you will be notified when the latest video comes out. We will also like to provide different ways to give your offering through electronic giving. If you'd like to send your offering, please send it to Christ Temple Cathedral, 4301 Page Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Once again, we say thank you for joining us and we pray God's blessing on your life. Thank you. Have a great week.